first of all, climate change will have a huge impact on food security. If we don't do something about climate change, then all the work that you're doing, fantastic work in the Rome based agencies on food security, could disappear and go back 20 years. So that's the number one. But at the same time, food security itself, what we do for food security, can have an impact on climate change, both positively and negatively. So let's work on those that have a positive impact uh, so that we adapt to future climate changes and at the same time also develop our approaches to food security in a way to mitigate uh, the emissions of climate change. There are many examples and there are increasingly more examples because already the global average temperature rise is almost one degree centigrade. But if you go to the north for the high latitudes, like uh, I was there with the Secretary General earlier this year at the uh, island of Svalbard in Norway, which is uh, well beyond the Arctic Circle, and there is, they already measure two degrees. And, and the different, and you can actually see things with your own eyes. So exactly as you say, the fish, uh, they move. They go to a different place. When the fish move, also the birds move. And when the birds move, they drop their droppings on a different island or a different part of an island, so the whole ecosystem moves. And you can see that with your own eyes. But you see the glaciers disappearing, uh, you see uh, uh, saltwater intrusion into the Mekong Delta. So uh, everywhere in the world, increasingly, we're seeing uh, uh, the impacts of climate change. And that's one of the reasons why governments are coming to Paris to make an agreement because they're pressured. They need to make an agreement because things are changing. Uh, first, uh, from Paris, we want a very strong agreement that will send a strong signal to the markets that we're going to a, a decarbonizing world. Uh, that is clearly what's happening already. We're just going to increase the speed uh, so that the markets can react, so that the private sector can react, so that everybody can react and develop appropriate strategies. But we need this long-term clear signal of the direction where we're going. So that's, that's basically Paris. Now, specifically what that means, we need an, a strong agreement on how to uh, come back every five years and improve the ambition of the national plans. We know that the national plans that countries have today is not enough. Uh, it's a good first step, but we need more. Uh, we need climate finance, so there is more, but ultimately what we need is this strong signal to the market. So that's one issue. Uh, the other issue about um, what will it take to convince people? Uh, well, uh, we need to, I think there is a bit of fatigue uh, of people because we've been bombarding them with all the negative impacts of climate change. And after a while people turn off and they don't want to hear anymore. So what we need to focus on is uh, much more the solutions, positive uh, messaging about what are the solutions. People have had enough of uh, the glaciers disappearing, the polar bears disappearing. It's all very far away. What we need is to focus on the solutions that we need renewable energy, we need to do healthy living, which means maybe less meat, which has a very strong uh, impact on, on climate change, things like that. But uh, pick out positive impacts. If you tell people don't eat meat, they will not like that. But if you discuss with people how we can have healthier living, healthier food systems, then maybe they will start talking. So let's focus more on the positive, messaging on the positive.